In this video, I'm gonna talk about candlestick charts, how to understand them, how to read them, and how to create those charts. So very often you'll see them in trading, in stock market trading, or currency, cryptocurrency, etc. So to really understand these, let's go through a basic example. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna open right here, Netflix stock price. And when you create a candlestick chart, you do it for a particular period of time. So in this particular case, we're gonna look at a single trading day. So if you look here, when the market opened in the beginning of the day, the price was $662.91. Then during the day, it went lower and then as you can see, it went up all the way up to here. And then finally, by the end of the day, when the market closed, it was $671.66. So during the day, our price goes up and down and we start at a certain price and we end at a certain price. So let's try to keep track of a few metrics here. The first one is gonna be our opening price. Opening price right here, if I roll over it, it's 662.91. So I'm gonna write it down. Similar to this, if I go by the end of the day, it's 671.66. So again, I'm gonna write it down. So this is gonna be our close. Then we're gonna check for the lowest amount during that period. So if I go through this, we can see that down here is the lowest amount. So that's 659. And then finally, if we go back to this, we're gonna get our highest amount, which is gonna be right here, 675.57. So this was for this period of time for this day. So I'm just gonna call this day one, just some text. So now using this data, I should be able to create a candlestick chart. So I'm gonna select this, go to insert, go to chart. And right here, we're gonna scroll up instead of column chart, I'm gonna scroll down and choose candlestick chart. It didn't guess my columns and rows correctly for some reason. Let's scroll down here, see the switch rows and columns. I'm gonna do that. And now it seems like we're doing better. See low is that low column, open is open, close is close. So we got that now right. And period would be this first column that defines the period. Now to be able to actually see what's going on here, we want to probably make this range a little smaller instead of going from zero to 800. We wanna choose a smaller range here. So for that, I'm gonna customize this, go to this vertical axis and see there is minimum and maximum value. So for minimum value, I'll go a little lower than our low. So let's try like 600. So let's go a little higher than that. Let's do 640, something like that. And if I just move this like this, we should be able to see our candlestick. And what you're gonna see here in this graph is that we get this body of this candlestick and then we get this line that goes up and down. Now let's try to understand what's going on here. So if you look here, the bottom of this body right here, that's gonna show us the opening price for this. So open was $662.91. And by the end of the day, when we close, that's this line, that's this 671 number right there. Now during that day, if you remember, we had also some highs and lows. So Sometimes it was trading for a higher amount, sometimes it was trading for a lower amount, and the minimum was here. So this shows what that minimum amount was, so we called it low in this case, 
And then finally, we have the maximum amount during that period, and that's our high. So that's what this whole thing illustrates. So we have open, close, low, and high. So usually when you get candlestick charts, you'll get two types of bodies. They can be in different colors. Sometimes one of them is empty, the other one is full. So that's the way you illustrate the difference. But you're gonna have two different types. So one of them is gonna be this. And let's create another example. And for that, I'm gonna use this Amazon example. So again, in this case, for this Amazon stock, you can see how our opening price was this much. So I'm gonna write it down again. And we have our close by the end of the day here. This gray area is after market. So we'll go here. That's our number. I'm gonna write it down. And then my lowest and highest amount during the day. So the maximum is here. And if we look at this, our minimum would be here. So now I'm gonna make another chart from this data. And again, I'll define the minimum. Something like that. And we could also define maximum, but I'm just gonna leave it at this. So I'm just gonna put this on the side of the other one. Now, if you look at this one, this doesn't show up full like this one did. And the reason for that is when I was looking at Netflix, the price during opening was lower than closing. The value increased. Now, if we go to Amazon example, here during opening, it's higher compared to closing. So value decreased. And that's why for this Amazon example, we got this empty body. And for this one, we get this full body. Depending on how this is illustrated, sometimes you'll see this is green, this is red or different colors. So it doesn't really matter. But the main thing here, those are the two types of bodies you're gonna get. And in this example, if the price shrinked, then basically your open is here on top and your close is here. And for this one, it's the opposite. Your open is down here and closes down here because by the end of the day, it was a higher price. And that's pretty much the base of understanding what candlestick charts actually do. Now, usually you wouldn't probably look at them in isolation like this for a single period. You would probably look at it over multiple periods and compare them to each other. Now, when we say period, like in this particular case, I chose my period to be one day for trading, right? But you could illustrate this candlestick on any period you pretty much want to illustrate it. For example, you could do this for three hour period, or you could do it for half of the day. Sometimes you even do it for like 15 minutes or five minutes and things like this. So for example, if I was doing this for let's say half of the trading day, then we would grab like middle of the day and we would basically check, see the beginning, how much it was, how much it was by the end of that period, which is half of the day. And then we would check what's the minimum and maximum within that section. And then we would do the same for the next half, which would at this point be our next period. Now in this example that I'm illustrating, I'm just gonna go with days. So we would compare, let's say, one day to another. And for that, you basically need to get the same information for each day. Now, if you have more periods, for each period, you basically add another line. So you will have your day two, day three, day four, and you'll have your numbers. Now for that, I already have this data here. We have our period. I can rename this, maybe call this like day one or something and drag this down. So your first column needs to be text. If you have dates, it would not work. So I have period, 
then I need low, open, close, high. Maybe we'll just do currency for this. So now if I wanted to create this, I would simply just select that information, not including dates because our first column is our periods as text. And we'll go under insert, do our chart, and basically just choose our candlestick if it's not automatically selected. It's probably worth to make sure that you have your lows, opens, and closes, they match. And at this point, to be able to actually visually see this better, I'm gonna change my minimum amount. So I'll go to vertical axis and do minimum to be right around here probably. So I'll try about 2,500, see what that looks like. I could go higher, 2,600 something like this. And you can see for each one of those lines, we basically draw one of those candlesticks. And you'll see for days when our price increased, we'll get this blue full candlestick. For the days when it decreased, we'll get this one that's not full. So now we can clearly see for which days our price increased and which days it actually decreased. And we can also see the range for that day. Like what was the price range? from the minimum amount to the highest amount for that particular day. So again, if I just push this to the side here, see we have our day one right here, and it started at this price, 2,688, and it increased by the end of the day. So we have a higher amount, that's why we got this. And then we got the next day when it decreased. Now I can do this in Excel too. This was like Google Sheets example. If I do it in Excel, we have a little more flexibility what colors we can give these things. In Google Sheets currently we can't. One other thing to remember in Excel is that your columns are in a little different order. So here you have to have open, high, low, close. In that particular order, first column would still be your periods. You don't need these dates. This is the data. We need to build that same chart. We go under insert and here we'll have this newer charts that fall under this like waterfall and all the stuff that appears here. And right here, see we have the stock and the first one, if I roll over that, see it says high, low, close. Now we also want to have open. So the second one, if I roll over, it says open, high, close, low. So I'm gonna click on that and it's basically just gonna draw this chart for me. And you can see in Excel, it illustrates it differently. So the empty one is the one that actually grows and this one is the one that actually shrinks, but we can change this. So what I could do, I could click on this box, that's the empty one, go to format and choose this background color to let's say make it green color when it goes up and then I can click on this one and I can make it red color, which is commonly how you're gonna see these in many platforms. And obviously when opening and closing are very close, for example, this one, then the actual body of this is very small. So it almost looks like a line. Now here in Excel, if I wanted to also change the minimum here, I could click here in this vertical axis right here, press control one. And that's gonna give me this panel where I can actually manually set what the minimum should be. So I can go here and do 2,600, hit enter, and there we go. Now it shows like this, so we can still control our minimum and maximum. And now after this, hopefully, when you look at this, you should clearly understand what's happening with charts like this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.